In this video, I'm going to show you how to combine multiple tabs of data or multiple sheets, however you want to call these things, to one master sheet. So if you look, I have some per partial data on this first tab. I have some more data on my second tab. I have another worksheet here on the third tab. And what I want to do, I want to simply have all of this data on my master tab. So the first thing I'm going to do, just go ahead and copy all of this on top, just right, just like that. So we have some labels and then we'll go ahead and start combining this data. So I'm going to use array method to do this. And this is the way it's going to work. I'm going to start in my equal sign. I'm going to open the curly bracket and that's our sign for an array. And I'll go ahead and go to my first partial data tab, highlight all of my data. Now uh, pay attention, I'm not including the labels on top in this particular case, right? So that's that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a comma here. So oh, actually I do a semicolon, sorry about that. So uh, now I'm gonna go to my partial two data. I'm going to highlight exactly the same size of data right here. And again, it doesn't matter how large it is, but again, I don't want to include the labels. And the second thing, you want to make sure that the columns are in the same order on all of these tabs, right? So uh, I have the third tab as well. So I'm gonna do another semicolon go partial data three, go ahead and highlight this data. And I don't have any more, so I'll go ahead and close my curly brace here, hit enter, and you should see how all the data is now from all different tabs combined. So if we go to partial data one, we have like 11 records here, we have 11 records on partial data two, and we have, oh, 11 of all of them, look at that. So 11, 11, 11, so we should have 33. So there it is, 34, and one is the label, right? So that's 33. So there we are, so we have our combined data, all of it together, but the challenge here is that uh, I want to be able to make something where you can go and just add another record. So I'm just gonna copy this record and paste it here and have it add to our master list without having to go back and redo the formula. But right now it's not gonna do that because we just mentioned a particular range and because that new row is not included, it's not gonna work. Now usually the way you uh, basically start from a per particular cell and keep scrolling down is by using, not using the end in your range. So I'm saying from A2 through G, and then from A through to G, A through A2 through G. This way I'm saying just start from the A2 and then all, all the way down uh, in our G column. Now I did this and if you pay attention, uh, it looks like it didn't work, right? So when we look at this, so uh, I have this 13 records, which actually come from this first one. Well, actually it's 12 records, but anyway, it doesn't matter. And it seems like there's no more records, but what happened here is not that there are no more records, is that if I keep scrolling down, at some point, we are going to see the second data piece, and then keep scrolling down, we're gonna see the third data piece. So what's happening here is that, not that it doesn't work, it works, but it basically takes this entire thing with all the blanks all the way down and includes all of these empty rows in it. And then the second one and the third one and basically makes a big tab out of all of those. So that's what we're having right now. So what we need to do basically is come up with something that's just going to remove all of those empty rows in between our data. So in order for me to do this, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab this uh, array formula that I have that returns this. I'm going to cut that and I just want to remember. So this is what it is, right? That's what it returns. So we want to keep that in mind. So I'm gonna cut that because I'm gonna need that formula. 
And what I'm going to use, I'm going to use query formula. So the first thing in this function is going to be uh, basically the data. So the data is going to be that array that we had. So I'm simply going to paste my array that was returning our data and I'm going to do comma. And the next thing in this function is the query. So the query needs to be as a string or as text means in quotes. And I'm going to use my query, which is going to be select. And I'm going to use asterisk for all columns and I will have to filter the data. So to filter the data, we'll have to use my where statement and I'm going to say where, so uh, I'm going to say where the column one. So in our data, the column one is not null. So I want it when it's not null, when it's not empty. So comma again, I have a lot of videos about query function on the channel. If you want to learn a lot more about this function, please go ahead and watch those videos. But right now I'm going to quickly explain what this says. Basically, I chose my data right here. And from that data, I'm saying select star and start means let's select all the columns from that data. And then I filter that data. I'm saying let's filter that, that, that data using column one and column one in our data is our dates. So I'm saying let's pull only the, those uh, rows where the date is not empty. So that's essentially what this says. And the headers is basically the numbers of headers in our data. The headers here, as you can see here on top, brand, cost, sales, cost of goods, etc. Now, if you remember when I was selecting the actual data in my array, I didn't actually select those headers. So I don't have any headers. So zero goes here. We close our parentheses here. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to get my results right here, right? So the main thing uh, you want to pay attention to here is that currently the only reason is that this works is that we always have dates. So you want to do this on a column in your data where you always have values. So if you know that like your C column is some sort of ID or something that's always going to have some value, then use that column instead of column one, use column two, column three, whichever column works. Now, if you don't have such column, then it's going to be more complicated. Your query is going to be much longer. So what you would have to do in those cases, you would have to chain a lot of ors. You would have to say, see, I'm saying where column one is not null, and then you will say, or column two is not null, or column three is not null, or column four is not null. Hopefully you won't have to do this, right? or column four is not null. You get the idea, you have to do this for all the columns, right? So I did it for one, two, three, four. So far, I have three more to go. And I'm gonna do or column five is not null, or column six is not null. Now thinking, uh, looking at this, I should have copied and pasted that. Or Column seven is not null. Hopefully I didn't mistype anything as I was doing this whole thing or forget something on the way. So there it is. I'm going to hit enter. I'm getting my data, so I'm fine. So that would be the full way of doing this. If you don't have a single column you can trust, right? So there it is. I get my data. So as you can see, I have 38 rows. Now I want to go back here and add some more rows here. So I'm going to copy a couple of more. It was 38, so this should make it 40, right? So there it is, 40. And it doesn't really matter to which uh, one I'm adding. So if I go ahead to my second tab, add more, three more, see, it's here in my master tab. Now, the f last thing we want to test is that this works on empty rows, not on empty cells, right? So 
if we have an empty cell here, like Midwestern is missing, we still want to make sure the data falls true. There it is. So we have the data. Now, the same could appear here. So if I have some things missing, like those, I still want this row to appear. So if I go here, that looks good. But if none of those are there, delete this one too, this should not be there now. So let's go and check this out and see how this works out for us. So we shouldn't have this one, but we should have this one. So going back here, perfect, it's gone. And we just had this one and this one right above it. So this works just fine and that's how we can combine our data. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, please join the channel, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.